Welcome to the Googleplex. This is an incredible place with lots of great stuff being worked on every single day. Before I worked here, I always wondered what it would be like to come to the Googleplex, meet up with a Googler, and have coffee with them, and just chat about what they do, how they do it, and why they do it. And today we're going to do exactly that. Welcome to this episode of Coffee with a Googler. And if you, like me, love games and love 3D games and all that kind of stuff, then this show should be a treat for you. Because today I'm chatting with Shannon Woods, who's a technical program manager, and she works on our rendering teams at Google. And she's got lots of great stuff to talk about in the 3D space. So welcome, Shannon. How are you? I'm doing all right. How are you? Really good. I'm, I have to say I'm really envious of your job. But can you, could you tell us what you do? <laughs> So I work with a couple of rendering teams here at Google, uh, both Android and Chrome. And we sort of plumb code from user space down to your GPU. Wow. <laughs> can, you, can you translate that? <laughs> <laughs> Basically, our job is to get a bunch of triangles from applications down to the GPU as fast as possible. Cool. And all graphics are ultimately made up of triangles, right? Basically. <laughs> <laughs> now, recently you announced Vulkan. Right, and this is this like new and improved 3D rendering API. Could you tell us a bit about it? Historically, uh, Android and all mobile phones really have used OpenGL ES okay. uh, to communicate to the GPU within the phone to tell it how to draw scenes. But unfortunately, over time, the API has become less and less of a good match for what the hardware is actually doing beneath. So what would happen is you would use this API to communicate a lot of the details about your scene, and the GPU has to reorganize all of that okay. so that it can consume it efficiently and draw it on the screen. Uh, so what Vulkan is, is it's another API from the same open standards group that makes OpenGL. And it's designed to be a lot closer to what the hardware actually does beneath the beneath the covers. Okay. So if you provide the data via Vulkan, um, it should be able to draw a lot quicker. Um, sort of the flip side of that is that you know it gives you all of this control, but it means that you have to be pretty good at uh, you know making sure that your code is doing exactly what you wanted it to do. Vulkan and OpenGL ES are both from the same standards body, right? Yes. So that's Kronos? Yes, Kronos. Kronos, sorry. So, <laughs> so, so you work with uh, the standards body at Kronos? I do. Um, I get to travel all around the world and uh, see beautiful conference rooms. <laughs> um, but it's, it's actually uh, really interesting getting, cool. to, getting to see how, the, how the, the API is made from the ground up. Cool. Android um, is going to support both OpenGL ES and Vulkan. So developers can choose which API is right for what they're doing. Like right. if they need to render a FPS game or first person shooting game yep. that uh, has to run really fast at a high frame rate, uh, then they're going to probably want to choose Vulkan so that okay. they can closely control exactly what's being drawn and when. Cool. Um, but if they just want to get a get a couple of shapes on screen, then OpenGL ES is probably still right, the right choice for them. Cool, cool. So it's, ju it's just really nice to have both. Yes. Cool. So, and I, from my understanding, what you're saying with Vulkan, like just being able to get down to the chipset level effectively um, allows you to squeeze a lot more performance out of the machine. Yeah, it does. And one of the other things that it does is that it allows for greater parallelization. Okay. Um, there's a lot of work in OpenGL ES that it's blocking work. Uh, you make a call into into OpenGL ES into the driver code, okay. and it has to stop and perform the task that you asked it to do. Okay. and doesn't return control to the application until it finishes that task. Okay. And what this means that it, it, is that if you have multiple threads, only one of them can really be talking to the driver doing these things at the same time. Vulkan is designed more for multi-threaded applications. So you can okay. have multiple threads doing things like constructing buffers full of commands at okay. the same time. You're getting onto like programming and skills and like from a, from a skills perspective and is the things that developers will need to learn that they don't do already, for example, if they're doing 3D games in OpenGL ES? So the skill sets are going to be largely the same. Um, it, as a Vulkan developer, you're going to have to have probably a tighter handle on things like you know, synchronization, uh, careful tracking of memory allocation, okay. because a lot less of that is going to be done for you by the driver. Um, the upside of this is that the driver won't be doing these things when you don't expect it to. Okay. But you're going to have to really hone your skills at uh, things like 
multi-threaded synchronization, okay. uh, memory allocation. Make sure that you are closely keeping an eye on what your code is doing and what it's asking the GPU to do, because the driver is going to do a whole lot less of that for you. It's going to, it's not going to clean up after you. It's, it's not going to check that you are making uh, legal calls. Okay. Um, so you're, you're, you're basically going to have to be a bit of a ninja. It's almost like driving stick versus driving manual, right? That's you probably know, that a really good stuff. analogy. So people can learn about Vulcan on the Kronos site. Yes. Mentioned. So that's Kronos.org? Kronos.org, www.kronos.org. And Kronos is spelled K-H-R-O-N-O-S. And they have a Vulcan landing page where you can find the latest news about Vulcan and also see some of the presentations that were given, uh, for example, at SIGGRAPH this year okay. and at GDC about uh, the shape of the API. Okay. Now, you were at SIGGRAPH, right? I was at SIGGRAPH. How did it go? Um, it was a lot of fun, actually. We, uh, we did some demos, uh, showed some spinning teapots. Teapots? So there's a little bit of history behind the teapot. Okay. Um, the teapot is canonically called the Utah teapot, and okay. it's because way back in the history of computer graphics, it's uh, one of the first uh, first models that was digitized and okay. shared. Um, and interestingly, so the teapot, everybody knows um, that they've seen here and there over the years, it looks short and squat. Okay. Um, but the reason for that is actually that on the original display system, the pixels were not square. So oh, they had a different aspect. Yeah, TVs. the aspect ratio is a little bit different. So in real life, the teapot's actually a little taller. Now you're saying that the pixels are like elongated, they were rectangular pixels, because this was done so long ago. Oh yeah, it was, oh gosh, I guess it was the 70s. Wow. <laughs> so the first 3D model that was formed in cyberspace or whatever you want to call it back yeah. in the 70s, and you're still using the same model today to... I think Pixar also use the teapot, don't they? Yeah, actually, the teapot appears in every Pixar film. Um, and one of the ones I know off the top of my head is uh, they use it in the in the tea party scene in Toy Story. Okay, naturally, but, that's where a teapot would fit. Yeah, but there's one in every Pixar film. Thank you so much, Shannon. Thank you. And thanks, everybody, for watching this episode of Coffee with a Googler. I don't know about you, but I've learned a lot about the kind of things that can be done with 3D graphics. And I'm really, really excited about Vulcan coming to Android. If you've got any questions for me or if you've got any questions for Shannon, just please leave them in the comments below. We'll also link to the websites in the description of this video so that you can follow those links. And if you want to learn anything else about great stuff that Google has to offer for Android developers, Chrome developers, and everybody else, please subscribe to the Google Developers channel. Thank you. Thank you.